everyone, it's Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's time for another epic conversation all about dungeons, dragons, and your favorite adventurers straight from the game. I'm your host and fellow D&D aficionado, Trisha Hirschberger. Stay here with me to get prepared for the next roll. Did I do that right? Is that good? Yes, of the dice. Hey, uh, the Dungeon Rundown on Caffeine is the newest, coolest live streaming spot to get an insider's recap on pirates, gnomes, and the crew's move up to level five. This is the place to be. On the set to get our mythical juices flowing, welcome Fahima, played by Jessica Lynn Parsons, and James Quillis, a.k.a. Morgan Peter Brown. Hi. Uh, so excited to have you both here tonight. We're, We're so, excited to be here. So excited to be here. We have <laughs> so much to unwrap from last week. Um, in episode 15 of the Dungeon Run, Pirate Problems, our adventurers were presented gifts as they departed Bingo. Let's start there. <laughs> James's funky librarian plaque was a great way to thank him for his time saving the island. But what did that plaque say? So Jessica and Morgan, mm -hmm. um, put on your thinking caps for a second and give me the funniest, most heartfelt five words <laughs> Oh. that the gnomes could have inscribed on that plaque. Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, on the spot here. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, hmm. Five words. He Count out. brings the books. Nope, that's four. No. <laughs> Boy, now, I, now that I'm casting sending, too, this gets even more important. Uh, Hail. <laughs> go on. Mustached. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> Dancy. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. Uh, bring the books, bring funk. I know. I was gonna say bring the books, bring the funk. I but like that's that. Six. Uh, bring the books, bring funk. I think you can bring, bring that. Bring, six. Funk. bring the, the books slash funk. <laughs> Perfect. I like it. Someone make that plaque uh, um, and, and share it. it with us on social media. All right, runners. Uh, did you know, this is new for this episode, and very exciting, that sharing your comments and questions in chat right now could earn you a Dungeon Run t-shirt. <gasps> what? That could happen oh, tonight. So my phone. post what you think <laughs> and what you want to know. Fahima, I think you're disqualified. <laughs> uh, you could end up with some cool swag that we're showing on screen right now. Woot, woot, woot. Um, so right now, take a few moments to get caught up. And while you're thinking of your witty question or comment, go ahead and watch this. The heroes of Bingle bedded down for the night. And as we rejoin them, a new day dawns on the island, the first in quite a while that is full of peace and hope. And also, our team leveled up. Yes! yes. Level yes, five. They're for me, <laughs> oh. uh, for delayed leveling. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I see. It. So I will uh, the, take this first one is pure dread. Mm. Your heart is heavy with dread. Why are you even doing this? <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so Jeff is just gonna quit. <laughs> Please use a real pretzel to signify this. Not only do you take no damage, but eating them IRL. In, in real life. life. In real oh, life. Come on, Dad. <laughs> Jared. Let the dice roll. I'll start literally like an old man in a metal detector on the beach. <laughs> uh, like, like, kind of like walking across the beach down closer to the water. Are you, are, you ro are you rolling your, your pant legs up? <laughs> nice, nice. I love it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Thank you. Not guys. tardy anymore. Maybe. On your way out, you kill Whitebeard. Whitebeard! Uh, I'm a little yes. confused <laughs> here. I think perhaps we should let Siv chat with him. I'll go and then talk as a party private later. I am later. very surprised at you, Lily. No. This is wrong. I'm what he is suggesting is wrong. The three of the pirates pull their scimitars. I'll go. I'll what? Go. Stop. <laughs> Stop it! What situation have you made better by doing this? I'm not, this is all yeah, between I got you, you and me, I got okay? You, I got you. Stop! We don't need these people. That's what I am upset about. All right. You think we do. You are simply treating everything as if it's a black and white situation. It is. No, it is not. Well, I disagree with you. Oh, really? You're, then you're a terrible person. Yes! You killed your I father. have been telling you that! Nothing is black and white. I'm sorry. Be an adult. Grow up. Why would you burn me? I'm sorry. <laughs> that was impressive, but I'm why sorry. would you do that? I'm sorry, to this I'm door, walks, 
What the heck? I just wanted to. Hey, what's going on? What? Hello, Aldo. <gasps> uh. I heard shouting. In here. No. It yes. Was, I was just. Mm, we we're bashing sound. We we're just. I'm sorry. Practicing spells. What did you guys find? I'm afraid not much. A naked photo of who? Well, it what? wasn't necessarily naked. It was just a suggestive pose. Scandalous. Oh. oh. They took all of us. The orcs. They knew. War is coming. Yeah, that was a pretty good recap. Wow! Of the last wow! Episode. Episode. Yeah, so much happened. So much happened. Wow! And we're gonna unpack it all today. But before we start that, I just want to remind everybody at home uh, that there are good pieces of swag coming out tonight. I know I love a good piece of swag. You guys do too. Tonight, your comments and thoughtful questions could earn you a Dungeon Run shirt. So just a little. Reminder, at the end of the stream, in fact, we're going to pick the best of the night. So dig deep and the winner could potentially be you. Um, so I know a lot of people had a lot of things to say during that. And some of the comments I want to highlight, uh, right to cut things, uh, right to kick things off. And Jessica, like I said, you're disqualified, but Witch and Warlock <laughs> Hour for sure uh, <laughs> was a favorite. And I, we're going to unpack this a little bit more deeper in, but because this is what's on everybody's mind right now, let's just kick it off. What was going through, this is from Branded Nerd, mm -hmm. what was going through Morgan's head during the whole Uggo James fight? So I, Morgan's head. I knew this was coming. Okay. Um, uh, I First, I will lead off uh, to rest everyone's minds that Immediately what happened after we went to break is Ron and I gave each other a big hug. Um, <laughs> it felt a little bit like walking a tightrope. Uh, it was very scary, um, but it was something that, at least from my mind, almost needed to happen because it was a bad situation that Ugo was actively making worse. And so um, I, I, it became very clear that he was not considering the options and that he was not, uh, you know, as I tried to communicate to him. And I don't know, I just, I, it, it speaks to the trust that we all have in each other, to be honest, that, that Ron felt comfortable making the choices that he was making and that I felt comfortable pushing back as hard as I did. Um, yeah, and I'll say, uh, sitting next to you guys fighting, I, I, I we, I didn't, think for a second that you guys were actually fighting because sure. we we talk after every game like we check in so I never thought oh sh oh shoot this is bad mm. like they're they're actually fighting with each other they're the, the the actors the men are fighting with each other <laughs> it's all character yeah it was um that that so I think we feel safe enough with each other um I ironically that we trust each other enough because what that fight is about is about trust at the end of the yeah. day yeah um it's uh, that that it felt fine to take it there. Having said that, I didn't. It didn't feel great. Uh, I don't. Li I didn't like doing it. Right. And, and I and I don't think I, I'm hoping and, and and you know don't think it will come to that uh, regularly. Hopefully, never again. So yeah, it was tough. Totally will. <laughs> You and me. It, Let's next do this. time it'll be freaking up. Yeah, for no, sure. Yeah, it, it, I don't know if I could win a screaming match though. <laughs> it bummed me out a little bit, but at the same time, it was it, it was a feeling that I legitimately had at that moment, and I decided to pursue it, and then it just kept going. Well, um, yeah. as the Soviet potato says, he got a huggo from Uggo, and I think that we're all glad that that's how yes. it, it resolved yes. for you guys. But yeah, I mean, it's hard, say for people who are playing home games. I know I can think of this situation happening several times where people will fight in game and that carries over sure. oh, yeah. to after the game is done or um, being mad at a DM after <laughs> for something or other. Uh, so do you think you would mention trust? Do you think it all boils down to trust or it's just that you guys have built up that relationship? As performers, know. absolutely, I think yeah. we have. Um, the team has not. Uh, and that is obvious. The characters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the oh, character. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the team Because we're a team, too, in real Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Um, but that started... There's a lot to unpack, as, as I think we yeah. said. That started, and as I think the package showed us, that um, Siv was starting to kind of work some of his 
charisma or at least kind of, you know, like to, to de-escalate the situation. That's what the dude does. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, Ugo was not allowing him to do that. Right. And Lily was trying to push for the same thing. And Ugo very clearly said he not, didn't want to do that. And as I stated, none of us, and, and I think I asked uh, Ugo at, this, at a certain point, I was like, did you really think we were going to hi be hired assassins? Right. And, 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 and it, as he stated, he very clearly stated that he doesn't trust Siv, that, Siv that, that he thought Captain Blowhard would talk him into killing someone. And it was just a very interesting dissection of where we stand as a team and what we think about each other, because it was like, what did you think was gonna happen? And then when Ugo starts saying, who cares, we can go back to Bingle and we'll take Claudia with us. I'm like, so we're gonna row to the deep reef? You're not thinking about things clearly. So why did you yell at Ugo and not at Fahima? Because she also was like, grr, I don't want to kill him either. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that it kind of felt like for a moment, like the whole party might gang up on Uggo. And then I love that you stepped in, <laughs> Jessica, and you were like, nope. I agree with him. I had, all are crazy. I had a problem with. I had a problem certainly with uh, with uh, suggesting that we just go kill this uh, Captain uh, Cap or Whitebeard. That we kill <laughs> Whitebeard. Um, I had a problem with that too. But I knew that no matter what we say to Blowhard, we'll work around it. Well, at one point when I was when Fahima was getting worked up, um, James was like Fahima, <laughs> and I was like. Oh! Oh my gosh. And I like, as a performer, I was like, oh. I like zipped up and I, cause I, I kind of heard like a very a, a authoritative tone. Sorry. Uh, no, no, <laughs> it was it was great because that's like a voice that Fahima has not really heard. Like mm -hmm. the most she's heard of that is I guess, maybe, maybe Ugo, but you're I guess the closest thing to sort of that, yeah, that authority. So maybe, maybe that's why you ended up yelling at Ugo and, and didn't feel like you needed to do the same to Fahima. Cause she was like, oh. I said as much during the episode, but for me it was literally like, you are taking away our options for what we can do by, by turning it into this type of situation. Uh, he was creating a situation where the best case scenario was we get kicked off the ship. Now, I <laughs> And the worst case scenario is we either kill them and maybe right. one of us gets hurt in the process. And so we're left with a ship with no one to know, that knows how to do anything with it. Well, and I love that you were saying that. You were like, so what do you suggest? So we kill him? Yeah. Like, what? Uh... No, you are you are genuinely not considering, like, yeah. what, what are what is the situation you're creating right now? And yeah. it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a long road, I think. But I, I you know, uh, and the other, oh boy, this is the other thing too. Captain Blowhard had a point. And Jeff does this so well, he created consequences for our actions. Actions yeah. have consequences. We charmed him to turn the ship around. And he didn't want to do that, but we did. And by doing so, we ran into the harpies and killed two of his crew. And we knew that at the time, that that was our fault. And there are consequences for that. And the and consequence for that is all of a sudden, now we need to go get him another helmsman. And that was really smart storytelling and play by Jeff. But it was just so when Ugo got uh, very standoffish immediately, I was I was seeing Captain Blowhard's side of it. I was like, this guy, we've put him in a very difficult position. So coming off like you're coming off, you're missing things. Oh man, at least someone could see that point of view because Fahima was real high off of <laughs> winning and sure. like being a hero. So there's no, like as soon as that was challenged by him, mm -hmm. was saying like, oh, Oh, you guys come in here and blah 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 blah. She was like, "Not wrong." <gasps> Excuse you? Yeah. We are heroes. Yeah, but yeah, we need somebody who's like, no, 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 no. No, but I mean, I like <laughs> I said, I loved that Fahima jumped in on the other side of it because it seemed like for a second it was going to be the whole party against Ugo. So, what was your thinking in that moment uh, as a player? Am I jumping in to defend our other player or were you just totally in character mode as Fahima? Because Fahima is a little mm -hmm. bit more impulsive and whimsical than the rest of the adventurers. So where was your head at? It was it was definitely all, all Fahima, but it was a nice side effect that I could split the party more evenly mm -hmm. on my opinion, but I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done that unless it was Fahima's opinion. I right? think I think um I, I think we are all, we've all gotten very good uh, quickly, nicely, uh, <laughs> at, at playing these characters truthfully. And it says something about the trust amongst us mm -hmm. that we're just sort of like, 
all right, here, you're gonna get Fahima, you know, like you're gonna get Ugo in all of his glory, you're gonna get all of it. And so, and I think- Deal the, with it. Deal with it, <laughs> and we had to. Um, yeah, and so I, I think it's leading to some really exciting things, but it can also lead to that. It certainly can. Um, and I just want to make a note for everyone in chat that is bringing up secret things about James. <sighs> I cannot uh, read those questions aloud on this Dungeon Rundown what? because she's Bella right here, Bella guys. Doesn't know these things. So I appreciate and love all of your questions, but we will hold them for and the if time. If the other players are in chat, I hope you're not seeing I hope either. you're not seeing things. <laughs> yes, there's a lot going on. Um, but one of the things, so I'm going to take it and kind of switch directions for sure. a second. One of the things that I really love so much about this show is not only watching you guys act out these scenarios so truthfully in studio, but also the absolutely astounding set pieces mm -hmm. that you get to play with. Insane. So not every Dungeons and Dragons campaign uses figures. Um, not everyone certainly has access to this kind of board. No. Yeah, who does? <laughs> uh, so like, in this, is... this last episode, we saw the Tardy Plunder return to the set. Yeah. Uh, what was your thought when either when you first saw the Tardy Plunder a few episodes ago or when it came back this time? Like, what is it like being that up close and personal with these set pieces? There's so much detail that I wish we could show everyone. Like, there's, there's squares for us to actually play on there's, on the ship. There's squares. At, they're squared the out. Work. The lights work. Um, there's so many details. I. The water I'm, is textured. Going back to the the, the very first one, the, the first Lodestar from the end of that first episode, yeah, it was just sort of like... <gasps> mind-blowing. <laughs> it was absolutely mind-blowing. And then just wrapping our heads around that uh, has been insane. So I think I, I'm they, they, they still blow my mind, but, but also it's just sort of like um, I'm expecting the unexpected at this point, too. Yeah. And what's so cool is this... In, I mean, all of our sets are better than imagination because I feel like, uh, of course, a lot of time in D&D you use the, the theater of the mind. Sure. And so you can imagine the, the best environment for yourself to play in. But yeah. when you get something like this, it's better than your imagination. Yeah. That's it's crazy. Like, so special. It's amazing. And I, I, I wish that I could pick it up and hold it here for you to see up close, but it's a hot set, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but maybe we'll all do some Instagram stories or something afterwards sure. so you can see, because there's cloth pieces, mm -hmm. there's strings on it, it's highly detailed to match the grid scale. Like, it is impressive. And I'll tell you guys a secret. When I first came in to meet for Dungeon Rundown yeah. uh, to host the show, it was the episode right before you guys encountered the Tardy Ponder. Oh, so you right. saw it before I saw it first. <laughs> um, and, and, but it was put together. And I was like, oh mm. man, but what if your figures are like somewhere inside the ship? And they were like, just wait. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh. oh, that was a moment too when they like took it's a it layer apart. Cake. Yeah. 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 Uh, does, has anybody else's, <laughs> anybody else's grandpa used to make those ships? My grandpa used to make, like make the model ships. Um, in great model detail. airplanes. I've, I think uh, some, like the ones in the bottles. Used to do, but not ships. Well, they were big. They were like this big, and okay. he put them in a case. But that's cool. what this reminds me of because it's yeah. so like, detailed with the rope and everything. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and we appreciate it. Siv's love interest. I like your name. Says this show is the best D and D show by far, in my opinion. Um, one of the <laughs> things that honestly really sets the show apart for me is all the really cool pieces you have. The Lodestar, yes. the Warden mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. behind me <laughs> with the working electricity. And I know um, you guys glossed over it casually, but the ship has working lights. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely insane and astounding. And I, I love the level of detail that goes into that. Um, so I squeed and fan <laughs> really hard there. Um, oh, here's a fun one from Zabin the Cyndaquil says, how would you react if Whitebeard was actually a drug lord? I've, I, I've <laughs> thought about Whitebeard a little bit. I was sort of like, what is what is the mystery of White? What is the relationship between Whitebeard and Blowhard that makes them, that makes that you know that has engendered that much rage? Uh, could be a lot of things. Could be father and son. Could be brothers. Could be ex lovers. <laughs> like it could be a lot of things. No. If he's a drug lord. I but mean, what kind of drugs? I don't know. Because, we, we look, this is a family-friendly show. Right. So what is drugs in the dungeon run? Mm. Jolt. Jolt cola. Jolt cola. <laughs> Back in the day. 
Joel Cola. That's what, that's uh, what he's doing. What's the What's the one from uh, the Oh boy, Skyrim and the Is it Skuma? Is one of the Skyrim drugs or something Maybe, like that? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'd be exactly. exciting. Fahima's definitely never done drugs. Neither is I mean, James. You, no you, way. even like dungeon run drugs, whatever that would be, like illegal pineapples. <laughs> Something, I don't know. Yeah, what's it called? Pine pine, pine rumple. Pine rumble. Pine rumble. Pine rumble. Smile. I yes. think is what it was. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. Maybe Whitebeard is hauling uh, pine rumble. But we did find out some interesting information about Whitebeard. We got a little hint that maybe family. Yeah, or something mm. like that. Something like yeah, that. What so they like, is it like the, the letter where he was writing a, and, oh, and right. crossing it out, definitely like no, there is there it, there is definitely the feeling that there was some affection here at some point, either familial or or otherwise. And mm -hmm. so, um, maybe yeah. they both dated Feisty Gale. Oof, I know. When are we going to see Feisty Gale again? Da, da, da. And I said this on the Discord. How have we not gotten uh, fan art? Tawdry <laughs> Feisty Gale Hammersmith <laughs> fan art yet? Where is it, artists? You Get have now it. been challenged. <laughs> okay, everyone. You Show us a pinup of, Ta of Feisty Gale Hammersmith. <laughs> been challenged. Uh, oh, MD4 D and D says we made our own pine rumple, and it's amazing. What? Wow. Send the recipe. Just rum and pineapple juice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, send the recipe, please. Fantastic. That would be fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, here's one uh, for Fahima. Is Fahima going to pull any more pranks? Was that a prank? We should start off with that, maybe. Yes, it was definitely a prank. Um, <laughs> That's from White Tiger Angel. Thank we'll, you for the question. We'll we'll see. Um, I think I think um, Fihima is gonna have to do some reflecting on the power that she has mm. because she could have hurt you. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't really want to answer because okay. I don't want to put any expectations on myself. I feel like conversations that will happen in the next episode potentially will kind of lead the way. Okay. Yeah, I think. I, I, and you asked me earlier, like, why didn't I respond as as negatively to Fahima? And mm. it was, oh yeah, I was telling him he was super nice about me. Well, <laughs> breaking him. And I, I think it was sort of like, yeah, what what the hell? What the hell are you doing? And then, it, and then once I immediately started to hear where it was coming from, it was like, oh, Fahima. <laughs> it was like, oh. How much damage can Fireball do? Or no, Firebolt. Well, oh, it's fire Firebolt. No, okay, yeah, if she cast Fireball, ooh, the oh, shit no, would've that would, been. Oh, no, that would be bad, that would no, be bad. No, it's just Firebolt, but even so, even Firebolt so. says it'll catch something on fire what, if you what, hit it. What was going through Fahima's brain, and also my brain as a player, is Firebolt is one of my least damaging spells, sure. and that could have... And it only did two points of damage it at did. the end of the day. It did. Still, well, thank goodness. it could have been real bad. But I mean, just like the, the what the spell is, it's like a, a huge bolt of fire, you know? <laughs> right. So she can, yeah, her her like friendly fire is, is potentially very dangerous. Especially on a large wooden ship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that was such a fun moment too, because as soon as that was pointed out, you were like, oh, can I take that back? Should I take that back? <laughs> Uh, Jeff was like, uh, no, 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 Yeah, well, there's always <laughs> those fun moments where it's like, do you want to let the meta dictate the story, or are you just going straight right. story and ignoring anything that happens out of game? And kudos to you for going straight story. Um, I have one more uh, question from chat for you, Jessica. Sailor Crescent Potter says, does Meep get stronger and bigger the longer she stays out of egg form? And I will, I'm bringing up that question so that you can show off <gasps> your new Meep as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, to answer that question, I... I, I I don't. I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, maybe that's a Jeff. She well, question. well, she is. He's teased maybe, but yeah. that, that it would take a while, well, right? Well, she's specifically like her creature type is baby phoenix, so oh. she she is specifically that. She's not like phoenix that we're homebrewing as small. Well, I guess it is sort of homebrew, but uh, yeah, Jeff. I mean, yeah, Jeff has said that that sh there is potential for her to. Get bigger and stronger. She stays alive long. She stays alive long enough. But but yes, yeah, she to... would she would reset if she got shot down again, which she's already been shot down into egg form once. Yeah. So. yeah. Can you imagine going through like a year and Meep grows up and then she gets shot down again by some teenager? Oh, I'd be so mad. Well. <laughs> With that being said, show us your Meep. Yeah, I don't know if you, I mean, it's so, it's so it's tiny. So it's tiny. so yeah, small. Make, make it, like, yeah, hold it in front of your, there, there you hold go. Hold it in front of your white. cheek or something. <laughs> <laughs> there, perfect. Yeah. Um, it's a miniature. Here, can you see it here-ish? The mini miniature. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, where's, I wish I had, oh, I do have my mini, hold didn't on. Didn't you paint it yourself? Yes, I you painted, painted it myself. You painted your own mini? 
I have never painted my own mini. I'm I have never painted it. my own mini either. And I'm going to be extra lazy now that you can 3D print them in color. <laughs> I love paint. I love oh, the idea man. of painting minis, though. Yeah. I love watching people paint minis. So tell us about this. Well, I can't find Fahima right now, but this is how big she is for size. Like, she's super, super, super tiny. I still, oh, there it is. Yeah, There's just bigger. big enough to sit on your shoulder. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, I had someone 3D print this for me. Um, it was originally an owl, and he, he like modified it to make it into awesome. you know, a, a bird, more of a, uh, uh, a phoenix type bird. And, yeah, I just it's did like perfect. ombre and put some spices on the base to give it some texture. <laughs> nice. I love it. I'm so proud of it. I never thought I would like little. Th I'm not like a little things person, but I like this little thing a lot. Indeed, does strange things to us. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> just to let you know, Jared is in chat talking about selling meat. He said. He said, we should just sell me if I'm sure we could get bank. <laughs> I mean, probably true. Jared's a bigger that softie than he lets on. That me. We should start talking trash about Jared oh, right yeah, about yeah, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've teased him, right? <laughs> let's talk about We're, Jared and Sharn in the crow's nest. Oh, I don't want to guide the conversation should. too much. No, let's define it. Jared right and the now. orc lady up in the crow's nest like went on for a while. It, it sure did. did. <laughs> that should have been a secret room conversation. It was a good, was a good, you know what I mean? It was a good conversation, though. It was just, you know. It was very informative. You definitely wanted it to be something else. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> well, while Jessica and everybody at home <laughs> ships uh, Ziv and Sharn, keep those thoughts and questions coming. And uh, I think it's just Sharn, then, isn't it? Si ship? No, I don't know. I'm sorry. Sarn? <laughs> yeah, Sarn. Sarn maybe is or their ship Shiv? name. Yeah. Sharv. Sharv. But Charge. remember, guys, <laughs> your questions and comments tonight could win you some swag. So uh, I'm sure you have lots and lots to think about. But while you're doing that and coming up with your next question or comment, take a look at this. I'm going to uh, look through my little my little spell book. Each, each, every other page has a monster drawn on it. Find the spell. And grab my gem around my neck and cast a giant fireball. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, uh, where would you like this fireball to go? Just out to sea? No, in the sand. Oh, you're going to shoot it at the sand? Yep. One okay. of the shacks. So just <laughs> shack it out. Explosions yeah. erupt on the logo. Why not? No. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Does need anything uh, burnt? Maybe, <laughs> maybe like a pile of, of um, oh, whatchamacallit? Deadwood? Kindling? Driftwood? driftwood? Yeah, driftwood. 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 Thank okay. you. Okay. So, Ugo is off uh, down the beach to the north, and uh, he, 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 you're not really even aware he's there, and you, you stand forward and your, your hair starts to sparkle and spark with fire and flames and expands over you. You feel uh, a rush of, of power that you haven't touched yet. You haven't experienced anything quite this potent yet. You've, produced fire and you've created balls of flame, but this spell, this spell feels like it comes from deep inside you and it, it's a new sensation, it's a powerful sensation, and it starts small as this crackling, whipping flame just kind of licking at the air and it swirls and swirls and expands and grows into this massive ball, of this inferno of fire, and it, it swirls in, in front of your eyes and. It, you feel the heat on your face, your hair is expanded and billowing out with, with its own kind of heat and fire. And then it goes, and it goes right into the sand and it kicks up this incredible, you know, uh, yeah, not a cloud of, of sand, but like, you know, it, it, like something but hit, hit the sand with a force, knocking the sand backwards and you see the, the fire leave this big hole, this, this, this singe mark in the ground itself. And there's like a divot in the ground. I'll go, you hear this very easily from I where you are. probably do too, right? Say, on the roof, yeah. yeah it probably yeah, wakes you up. Uh, you know, actually, just roll perception and see. <laughs> You're such a good storyteller, Jeff. That oh, was fantastic. Well, thank you. <laughs> so much fun. Uh, during that clip, I saw Life is Pain say it first. And I'm sorry if someone else said it before, but that was the first I saw it. Shiv is absolutely the ship name. <laughs> Shiv. Shiv. How did we miss that, guys? It was so smart. <laughs> it was so smart. Um, guys, we're at the halfway point in the show right now, and the conversation is full speed ahead. A Dungeon Run shirt is up for grabs to the best commenter question, so make sure that you keep that in mind. I've got a question here from uh, the Wookiee King. Yay, Wookiee King. says, we asked this to Ron and Katie, but do you two 
have backup characters in like a worst case scenario should something happen? I, I create characters when I'm bored sometimes. Me so, too. so yes, um, okay. none that none that I'm currently all that attached to. I have some that would be, you know, um, yeah, but but I have no intention to stop playing James unless something terrible happens. So, um, yeah, short answer, yes. Okay, yeah. I I do. I haven't fully created her. I'm I'm doing like a homebrew class for her, uh, but I, I I have yet to see if she would be a good fit for this party. Interesting, because of her personality. Yeah, but I'm very excited about it. Well, and I I. I homebrewed a cleric, or I didn't homebrew, but I thought of a cleric because yeah. I was like, boy, this party could use a cleric. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, what kind of cleric would I want? That was just sort of like a mental exercise one day. It was sort of like, what kind of cleric would work with this party? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we do have a, a particular vibe. Yes. That mm -hmm. needs to be. Sure, and everybody's got their, together. their, yeah, their roles, their fit. Yeah. So, well, yeah. And I would imagine if a new character came into the party at this point in time, it would probably take a couple episodes before they started to dive. Sure. Yeah, but I think if it was if it was a guest say and we knew who they were coming in, sure. it could be like it could be like fireworks if it, if it was the right person, the right character, it could right. just go right away. Yeah. Totally. I know. And I'm sure Jeff would have some say in that and some approval in that process as well because I know he was very involved in kind of setting up the characters initially yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. How involved was he in setting up your two characters or did you kind of come with them pre-made and say this is what I want to do? I, I came with James. I, uh, it was you and I were the two warlocks mm -hmm. at the final chemistry and so it was sort of we knew that one of them was going to, that one of us was probably going to have to switch. And I, and I did say, clearly, I was like, uh, I'm happy to switch if need be. I'm happy to adjust. I was like, James only works as a warlock, though. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I was like, if you could make James a wizard, but he'd be a boring wizard. <laughs> so it was just, you know, so so I was like, if, if you like this character for me a lot, it, he kind of has to be the warlock, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, I didn't want to drive you away from your character, so it was just sort of a conversation. Yeah, I was totally open to changing. I, I just did a character who I was most comfortable with. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we worked on it together. I think Jeff helped me a lot because he helped me see the world that she would be in, which helped me define more who she would be. It's hard to think of Fahima as a warlock. So was it kind of Fahima as a warlock or was it a completely Probably different character? character. Got, it. Yeah. Yeah. got it, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Super different. I, She's I, kind of stuck I, up. Yeah, I, 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 in a I, nice way. I like itching to play another character. I like. I want to show you. I can do more than just Fahima. <laughs> so can you tell us? Tell us who the more than just Fahima is. Tell us who that character was from casting. Unless you're planning on using her. Oh no, no. I think I we talked about her um, uh, last time. She she's sort of very, very prim and proper, and she didn't want to get dirty at all. <laughs> but I have this other character who's a seven year old ASMR bard, and he's the cutest. Oh His name God. is Brick. That sounds. Ah! Adorable. I really want to play him more. He's the best. I don't know about having a seven-year-old in some of these situations. It's though. so funny when I play him because, you, yeah, having got to be the right kind of a campaign. Chubby seven-year-old <laughs> who like loves to cuddle and loves purple socks and, and has, has wings? to be level one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, how do you level up a seven-year-old? Really? <laughs> He's. It's awesome. Well, well, part of his backstory is that he doesn't age. So. Oh. His, his backstory, <laughs> unlike Fahima, Fahima's the first character that was a little more shallow, let, let me play around more. He, his backstory is very deep. Got it. Mm -hmm. Right, pages on that guy. Um, Jeffrey III asks, what are Jessica and Morgan's alignments in real life <laughs> and or favorite alignment? Sure. I mean, I, 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 you'll sometimes see me wear, I do wear a pin that says chaotic neutral just because I enjoy it and it's funny. Uh, but if I'm- You're not though for real. If I'm, no, I'm re you know me well enough. <laughs> at all. I'm probably a boring neutral good. Um, yeah. <laughs> hmm. What do you think? I, I've, I've put some thought into this. I, I think I'm like 90% lawful good but I break. Oh, but oh I, we're getting a head but, shake. But, but I, I disagree. But, 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 but not because I follow the the law. Yeah, I but <laughs> but be, because that's I, all I'll say. Because my, my moral compass is very straight. I like never lie for real. I really okay. don't. Right. And I, I I really I'm noticing that as I age more that my moral compass is very strong. But yeah. I guess that's not. I guess maybe that's not lawful. It's not maybe the, the same moral thing compass, is, I would say, is good. 
Yeah, good. Yeah, good for evil sure, spectrum. But. but I have a healthy measure of selfishness that's still inside, so I don't know. So maybe more neutral? I'm okay, so not we, sure. We have the grid. Yeah. yeah. I'm right here between lawful and neutral and good and neutral. And I think that might be where a lot of humanity lives. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. But if you had to put yourself in a box, you'd probably say lawful good. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, neutral good. Oh, neutral good. Neutral good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we what's got a my bunch of good folks alignment? here. Yeah, I, what's your favorite alignment? I don't know. My favorite alignment is lawful good. I think it's hilarious to play. Like a, like a <laughs> paladin crusader or something like that. My warlock was was lawful good, and oh, I had a wow. Yeah, so she would never break the law, but then like also cast like horrible spells. Right. Wow. <laughs> so. when, when it was time, she yeah. she came down with the thunder. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I think as, as warlocks, warlocks are, are experts at rationalization and compartmentalization <laughs> and gray areas and just sort of like, uh, I can do these things, but I can still maybe do some good with them, I hope. You know, yeah. what these good warlocks are. So, yeah, that's funny. Um, I, yeah, chaotic is fun. Uh, chaotic good is fun sometimes. Um, but it's, I don't know, it depends on the character, it depends on what's right. Yeah. Um, Sunny D four hundred says, "Aren't genies evil though, especially the fire ones?" Girl, yes, they are. <laughs> uh, genies are total brats. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you had that power, wouldn't you be? But you're only part genie. Well, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But fire. If you look them up, Afridi and Merid, the fire and water genies in the D and D world are very are like evil and selfish and have all these negative qualities. So. Yeah, I'm still I'm still finding that and playing with with that like how much of that's leaked into but the, the genie human's genetics. I, I, unless this isn't true, but the genie part of your uh, heritage uh, was not part of your life growing up. No, well, yeah. no. Yeah. No. So. Yeah. But I mean, it's like it's your nature, yeah. you know. And mm -hmm. it, there, she's not human. We don't really know how much nature drives each one of the the races in D and D. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, I also, my mind was blown a little bit when uh, I started watching this series and I heard you say Genasi because as so many of us that started D&D &D early in life, reading just from books, we pronounce things different ways. And oh, I yeah. said genocide and I was like, Oh, it's Genasi? <laughs> and I totally looked it up. You are 100% correct. Really? It's That's Genasi. Funny. I've never looked it up. Oh, yeah. I've I went down the deep rabbit hole of the internet. It's Genasi. I've okay. heard Ganasi a lot. Mm. I think that's, a, that's an easy one to mix up. But I think Genie, Genasi, that makes sense. But Genasi. Genasi. I've never heard I that, but that makes pronounced sense. pronounced it. But I, I played an Air Genasi in high school, <laughs> or Genasi. <laughs> an Air Genasi in high school. Uh, so I immediately related Amazing. to Fahima. Do you know if Air Genies that. are, uh, what are they? They're, um, they're, they're, what's like the genies very Genies are chaos. a dark spot for me, kind of. What's, what's the, the, that's a really common name for genies. Jin? Jin, oh, yes, that's yeah, the air the genie. Are they yeah. mm -hmm. are they evil mm -hmm. or or what? Are they nice? Uh, uh, I, I think chaos is all I remember running with. Got it's it. like sounds part like air wind. genie, <laughs> very chaotic tornado. You know all that good stuff. Um, uh, Zabin the Cyndaquil says, question for Fahima: Are you a full genie or only half genie? Or you don't? Do you even know how much genie? Don't know. Uh, the part. the book says the elemental evil companion book says that gene uh genasi can be born in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. that it can just be like something that's passed down it can be something that's happened to them so mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know how much genie she is i kind of love that you don't know yeah it's have, fun it's yeah i think jeff knows for discovery i think jeff knows probably mm -hmm. Uh, yes. And Jeff also knows all the things you guys are asking about Morgan that I cannot say out loud. <laughs> say, um, say a lot of so much. Nope, we're not Should I just pull anything. out my phone and like look at them? No. It's no. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, but I mean, we, we have seen our players go through lots of different changes uh, in, in their personal lives that could impact the team for yeah. better or for worse. Um, Fahima, in particular, is gaining spells and intrigued by the idea of romance, as we saw in this last episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> while a darker side of James is really beginning to emerge to a level that oh, our other party members <laughs> are seeing it now. Um, so, to the two of you, um, Morgan and Jessica, how has the journey changed our adventurers from day one to now? A lot. As they're leaving Bingo. Like, just, so take us through mm -hmm. like where Fahima was episode one till now and where James was episode one till now. Yeah, a lot. Um, 
I think, uh, I, I will say going back to the fight that happened, um, going from the fight directly into using suggestion on someone felt bad. <laughs> like, that felt dark. I mean, it's kind of bad. It felt, felt pretty yeah. dark. Suggestion is a, like, those kind of charm spells like that, they, it's so funny because they're, they seem funny or they seem fun. Like, Lily casts charm person, you know, all this stuff. But having said that, like, when you really break it down at the end of the day, they're a little dark. And um, James is becoming more aware of the power that he's getting. Um, and it's, it excites him, and I think it scares him a little bit. But, um, but he's using it. Yes, he is. Uh, he's using it to the best of his ability to, to do what's right. I mean, that was, it was really cool to get sending. I was very happy to, to, to get sending because, as you might be able to tell, uh, I'm kind of following an idea with James that a lot of his uh, powers almost make him feel like Charles Xavier. <laughs> like where he's got Awakened Mind, which isn't a spell, but it's ability. Um, sending, detect thoughts, suggestion, like all of these sort of psychic kind of spells. Um, and which kind of come out of this this feeling of this very cerebral guy. Um, but having said that, yeah, it the the more power we get, the more I think we're forced to kind of deal with how we have to use it or how or you know what the consequences are again. I have a question not related to power though. That's fine. So you grew up as a librarian. Mm -hmm. You like books. Mm -hmm. People are pretty quiet. Yeah. So how do you feel being in a group of total psychos right now? Because the last episode, you were the referee. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like a personality thing, really. Yep. Fish out of water, I imagine. Um, well, I don't know. It's a tough question to answer uh, because it doesn't make James look very good sometimes. There are times when James feels like the only adult in the room to himself. Um, and Even Lily? Lily is a mystery. To be honest, Lily is kind of a mystery to James. So she I, got, she's kind of mom if you're kind of dad. Yeah, I, I can see that, but Lily's also only 24, I think she's or 23, she said. What is age? And it's true, what is age? And she, she does have, and, and so I think James sort of looks at Lily it, it, as, as a mystery because she's kind of like, where did this person come from? What made her? She is this three foot tall um, with with the will of, a, of an ox, you know? Yeah. Like she's so strong and and just had no pro, well, I mean, she did have a problem, but like left her home and all this stuff, she's so brave that I think Lily probably blows James's mind the most. Um, but I, he sees, absolutely sees the potential in the team and sees, you know, and doesn't, let me say this carefully, doesn't trust everybody completely, mm -hmm. but. How can you not trust me? I think he trusts Fahima to do a lot. I just do exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> you can that, that. and that, that's a level of trust. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, and and he trusts Ugo to do certain things. He trusts Siv to do certain things. So James didn't have that big of a problem leaving Siv to talk to Captain Blowhard because he could see that they were kind of kindred spirits a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's you know I think James is seeing how they complement each other, and when that kind of all started to fall apart was when he responded rather aggressively. So maybe it would be fair to say that James has gotten both stronger and a little darker since episode one on his journey. Yeah. Okay. Just like Which I think is phone. only natural. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. And now Fahima has certainly gotten stronger too, but personality wise, what do you think has changed with Fahima from episode one until now? So I was thinking about that while you were talking. I wasn't listening. That's fine. I, I was listening. I, was I appreciate listening. your honesty. Um, I was listening. Uh, <laughs> my turn to talk. My turn to talk. Uh, what am I, I going to say? What am I going to say? <laughs> you know that feeling of how you study in high school really hard because you want to go to college, mm -hmm. and so you're super prepared. Sure. And your teachers give you tests. You take the SAT, the ACT, whatever. Oh, nerds killing here. You it. Can go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, kill <laughs> yeah you're killing it. You're like, I'm prepared. A plus, yes. four point two. Got this. <laughs> and right? then you get to college or trade 4 .2, school or. Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you take AP courses and that raises your GPA. Sorry. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> 
Anyway, go ahead. Uh, you like, get to college. Yeah, you get to college, <laughs> trade school, or not college or whatever, and you're like, oh my God, I'm not prepared. I mean, I'm kind of prepared, and you kind of like stumble along, and but you're not doing as well as you thought you might have done, but then at the same time, you're not under your parents' roof anymore, and you have all of this freedom, mm -hmm. and you kind of test the limits. So it's kind of that feeling of like, not being fully prepared, but also the entire world has opened to you. Mm -hmm. I think she's going through that. I think that's incredibly relatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can kind of... You make a lot of mistakes at yeah. that age. I know I did. I think your freshman year of college should just be erased from history for everyone. <laughs> I know I definitely went through a period where I was like, if I can eat ice cream all three meals a day, I'm right? gonna do that. And you're like, wait a second, I'm an adult? <laughs> <laughs> I have money, I can spend on whatever I, I want. I think I can go to bed whenever I want. But at the same time, you learn responsibility along the way, and that's like, in hindsight, not at the time, I think, for a lot of people, but in hindsight, it is a beautiful journey, and it's something that you reflect on so that you can pass that knowledge on. I enjoy the effect that all of us are kind of having on each other, though, because I think the the, the prank or whatever, I, I think there is a <laughs> world right. where Fahima helps James become a little more impulsive. And then, but, so I think maybe they start to meet in the middle, you know, where hopefully James helps Fahima be a little more considerate or, you know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I Thoughtful, think- Thoughtful, mindful. Yeah, yeah, just mindful. Mindful's the good word, yeah. Well, I love that you guys are helping each other so much. I think, and I think it's, I think the echoes are, are all throughout the, the party, for sure. I would agree. All right, guys, uh, this conversation is so good. I'm sure that you guys could use another brush up on last week's Dungeon Run, though. So just for you, here's another huge moment for you to check out. We're leaving now, and you've really proved yourself over the last couple days. So I need you to keep Bingle safe, all right? But, Delia, I want to come with you. I know, but you can't come with me because we need you here. Who's going to protect the island if you're at, you and me are both gone? But the island has Grammy and old Paul and Dad and and they I all did come with rape. you and and, and, Siv and 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 I'll go and everyone. I have magic now. Remember last night? I have magic. I know, but you got to work on it. Okay, you got to really make sure. It, Practice it, okay? I slip a dagger into your hand. Whoa. But. <laughs> don't worry about it. No, no. <laughs> if anything bad happens, you now know how to make the special cocktails, right? Yeah. And this is a present from a certain sieve. What's? It's the nice dagger that we took off of Filt. Mm. So it's like got gems on it and stuff. Yeah. Very careful with that. <clears throat> Dad, Daddy, can I? Uh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How old is Brenda? Is that a girl? Say? Six. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you I suppose you can hold on to it until they get back, and if we practice together, <clears throat> we can learn how to use it properly. Great. And from Ugo, these drums. <gasps> okay? So you have a full, like, War situation set up here. <laughs> Damage <laughs> and healing! Yeah. And you remember, it's important, okay, to be very careful with your power. Okay. I'll see you guys when you come back. And send us a letter if anything happens, okay? You're I in promise. charge of that. Right. Okay, I love you. She picks up the big old drum that's almost as big as she is, and uh, <laughs> she has this <laughs> dagger, and she goes running off. Okay, <laughs> run with the dagger! <laughs> I feel like we can all agree with Calcanius in chat who says this scene makes me cry every time oh. and um, I was dying laughing. Everyone in chat was saying, you just gave a little girl a knife. <laughs> That totally happened. It's all it's always how Jared does it too, which is like, I put a knife into your hand. <laughs> slip slip it in there. I called oh, it no I called deal. it out one night where it was like, you say them like such a sociopath sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so There's good. A trash talk. That's yes. yeah, Jared. Talk. Eat it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, who is it? Someone in chat said uh Prim's gonna grow up and great and save the world. Absolutely. It's gonna be the world's last hope for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For that. That's Right. Um, so despite all the laughter and the sweet moments in episode 15 for our adventurers, uh, as we mentioned earlier, things got kind of intense. Mm -hmm. So after Siv agrees, kind of, to take care of Whitebeard for the Tardy Plunders captain, Ugo's emotional reaction to the request triggered a 
very tense moment with you, James. Um, so we kind of didn't talk about this part of the altercation. What do you think got Ugo so upset over hearing Siv talking to the captain? Like, what do you think that trigger was and maybe why it went from one to 15 as fast as it did? Um, yeah, I, 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 I... I don't pretend to know all the reasons, to be honest. Um, I think th th it's possible that, that we know that Ugo feels particularly protective of humans, mm -hmm. um, that he, you know, that he kills monsters, not people, I think is something that Ron actually said in that moment. Uh, so. Well, he just didn't like the idea of somebody telling him to murder somebody else, I think. And well, none of us did. And mm -hmm. some of us were more verbal about that than others. And, and I. Oh. You know, maybe it was because uh, people, other others, like uh, other people in the party, could just be like, um, "No, <laughs> I'm not going to murder people." But, <laughs> but maybe he felt like he's been coerced into something like that in the past, or he's expected to be like that, so he had to have more of an emotional reaction. That was that's what I. Well, and it, and it also it. got into the 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 black and white part of the argument where it was. Um, Ugo has some self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. and uh, he hates himself at times, and thinks he's a monster, as he said, and been very open about. But having said that, he doesn't act like a person who's a monster. So I, I challenged him to be like, I don't believe you that you think you're a terrible person because you don't act like it, or that you think there is no, that there is no retribution for yourself. Right because you certainly don't act that way. And it was it's actually an echo of what you said to him in the previous episode, which is like, you've got the biggest heart I've ever seen. I'm mm. sorry, you're not a monster. Yeah. And so, you know, he's really running his head into some walls uh, when it comes to his feelings about himself and how other people see him. Um, and, you know, I, 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 again, I don't pretend to know where it all comes from and who knows what's gonna happen. I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> I'm sure we will. And Ron's in chat right now as well. So uh, he was commenting on how uh, close or far you guys were in your guesses in yeah. chat. Um, here's a question from Zabin the uh, Cinequil says, are either of you planning to multi-class in the near future? Ooh, I want that wish. I want that wish, though. You want that You want that ninth level spell? I want that wish, though. That's so, the thing. So stick in the course I for you. I can't, hey. can't multi-class. I have considered it, but yeah, that is one bad thing about multi-classing, especially if you're a spellcaster, mm -hmm. is uh, it means you it means you say goodbye to a couple of those really awesome high-level spells. Well, and high-level spells are so OP. Nuts. Like, yeah. it, if you get to that point, Power it's absolutely kill. bonkers. There's, there's well. one for warlocks, I think it's for wizards too, which I was like, oh gosh, if we ever wanted to go really dark with James, Psychic Scream, I think oh. it's called, <laughs> where literally it's, it, it is like an explosion of psychic energy in like a radius, and it actually says that if you, this takes anyone below zero hit points, their head explodes. Wow. <laughs> I think that's either wow. seventh or eighth level. It, it's not, a, it might be a ninth level. I don't Holy think moly. it was. Well, uh, the thing that goes through my mind is it's so rare that you get to that level. I've never gotten, like, organically over a, over a period of time, I've never gotten past, I think, eighth or ninth level. So sometimes I'm like, whatever, I'll just multi-class because it'll be more fun. Right. But there's zero synergy for wizards multi-classing, so I would take a hit. Although I have a long, long list of all the different spells that overlap with druids and overlap with rangers because I really, really want a multi-class with ranger or druid, but I just can't. I have to flavor her. I would have to, for me... You have it, synergy with warlocks. Yeah, no, there is. But for me, it would have to come out of something in the story. So I have ideas of things that could work, mm -hmm. but I would have to... I'm just not going to go... I'll take a level of fighter. You right. know, like it just doesn't make sense. Well, uh, now you got that uh, that bard sprinkled in there from your dancey dance. Oh wow! Yeah. That's what uh, someone <laughs> said in here that you are already multi-classed as a funky librarian. Fantastic! <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yes. you for that comment. Five um, levels of warlock, one level of thunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, Wait, sound, how many that sounds bad, actually. Oh, I don't know. Too many for the plaque. I need deodorant. <laughs> like, if I've got one level of funk. <laughs> so funny. Um, all right, Lily Dumblestuck fan yeah. says, for both of you, do you regret any decisions that your character has made up until this point? Hmm. I would say in-game, not backstory. No, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, 
there are there are situations that I regret, and I think I've even said this in game. I really didn't like leaving Turles the way we left it. Um, I'll return though. I know we will, but uh, poor Joral, um, and poor everybody out there that's that's you know got something to do that that's being kind of uh, screwed over by by the the moratorium on magic. Uh, so I think leaving his friends and family there uh, was really hard, and I think it eats at him. It eats at James a little bit. Um, I, he knows there's nothing he could do, but yeah, it, it was the situation. And this is all about priorities. We have so many priorities now. It's finding out about Diptha and, and Torvald at the end of the episode. Right? It's like, mm -hmm. all right, we have things to do. <laughs> like. Like, no more messing around. So, like, yeah. Whitebeard, get the helmsman, go to the deep brief, like, uh -huh. knock it out, let's go. So that's three major yeah. directions you, as a party, could choose to go right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to do. And oh, yeah. so, um, yeah, uh, James will do his best to keep things on task because I think hearing Diptha's voice in his head, sad and scared, um, is like, no messing around now. We gotta move. Yeah. Okay. Anything you regret as Fahima? Uh, the only thing I, I, is that I, I just, uh, I think I could have picked a, a, a better spell to hit James with on last episode. <laughs> but I Like mean, magic missile, which would have done a lot more damage? Okay, well, I had a conversation <laughs> with Jeff and, and we, we were like, maybe I could have like punched him or like done something not so lethal. But in the end, it's, it's like, you can't have regrets, especially in a D&D game, because literally everything you do dictates something in the future that you can make into yeah. a gift. Well, and that's very Fahima. Like, yeah. if you just walked up and punched him in the back of the head, I don't think that would have been near as telling about your character as yeah, what you did, that's, you know? that's true, I mean. I, um, I is... what, what, wait, okay. Yes. Answer me this. Okay. What could I have done for my prank to have actually worked. For you to turn, whip around and be like, Ugh! and like shoot something at me. I don't think that's James, honestly. Really? To just Doomed turn to around. failure. Well, and I was gonna see you no matter what. I know, I, that was me, I forgot about that. I forgot, I would drop invisibility. And? <laughs> Imagine that as like a comic book panel, like whoop! <laughs> just suddenly appears. I honestly don't know. James is not the like literally fire eldritch blast <laughs> under his arm, you know, like uh, like. You might be someday. Might be, might be, uh, but uh, I don't. <laughs> I think, I think assess the situation, and mm -hmm. decide what to do is probably how his brain works. Yeah. So I don't know if that was ever going to come to pass. I'm sorry. <laughs> hmm. But having said that, who knows? But it was a an excellent learning opportunity for Fahima. For sure. Because she saw someone who is respectable, who used his brain before he used his magic. Thank you, that's cool. very nice. I, you guys are instructing each other well. <laughs> and they, I did, there was, um, during the Battle of Bingle, when the, when uh, we came back for episode 14, I had thought about all week casting, trying to cast suggestion on the um, giant crab thing that was oh, bearing down on me. The chill, the chill. Yeah. Um, and I ended up using Misty Step instead to just get me out of there because um, suggestion could have not worked. Mm -hmm. um, and But also there's a question of whether I'm able to cast suggestion through using Awakened Mind. What Got counts it. as the verbal component of a spell? Sure. It's very nerdy and it was a maybe versus a, just get out of there, man. Mm. And so, yeah. And once, uh, once I saw Ugo in trouble on the other side of the, the battlefield, I was like, gotta get over there, bye. The answer has been made. Yep. All right, friends, we've got just a few minutes left of today's Dungeon Rundown and of course a swanky piece of swag on the line. So make sure that you're heard in chat. We're picking the best comments or questions of the night, and who knows, a cool new t-shirt could be on its way to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what you guys, the viewers, have to say. I've got a couple more here from you from Fat Papa Power. Do you guys prefer hard copy character sheets or online services and apps? Hard copy. I am falling in love with D&D Beyond, though. Oh, D&D Beyond really is amazing. It is really great. Um, yeah. I do use, uh, you'll see me using my phone uh, on stage um, when we're playing because I do use D&D Spell 5E, the app. That's a good app. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's got like every spell, break it down, and uh, you, you track your spell slots as well. Uh, for spells, I do use that. Besides that, I do I do like pen and paper. So I have 
I will stay on D&D Beyond and just play around for a while. I have yet to actually ever play a session using D&D Beyond, though. Mm. But it is amazing. D&D uh, D &D Beyond is a gorgeous yeah. resource. Yeah. Uh, but it's just so satisfying when you lose hit points to like erase it. Yeah. And see like the indent of your pencil that's left in the paper, <laughs> like, mmm, right it's a over rough night. it. <laughs> uh, Magical Anime Cat in chat says, D&D Beyond! <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love for D&D Beyond in chat. I have yet to try it. I see Ron in chat. Uh, Ron Ogden says, I converted my campaign to D&D Beyond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel yes. like I'm like so old school, but am I being like the old person on the, on the porch in the rocking chair? Nope. That's like back in my day. You do you. No way. No, it's you know. fine. Oh, yeah. hard, hard copies. It's funny where we draw the line because I, I don't know anyone who prefers using dice apps. But oh, they no. exist. No, they're terrible. Right. The faces you both just made is exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no. To, you have to roll dice. <laughs> yes, exactly. But there yeah. are dice rolling apps. Why don't we use them? Because it doesn't feel right. That's yeah. why. It most definitely doesn't feel right. Here, I'll, I'll add one to this. Um, Metal dice or not metal dice? How do you prefer? I have one roll. set of metal dice, and I also have one set of obsidian dice. And the gorgeous. Ooh, they're beautiful. Obsidian dice are beautiful. Um, the I, I so I do have one set of metal dice. I couldn't do all metal dice. It it, it would be a it would be a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I I just go by feel. I'm not a superstitious person, but I do audition my dice before every game. You do. Then you're I kind you, of, are you you're right kind next to me. Of a superstitious person. You will, yeah, I know it's weird. <laughs> well, if you ask me, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, I know this doesn't mean anything, but I guess I just like to do it, where it's like I roll all my D20s. You do it before and... every game? Yeah. Every 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 game? Yeah. I will just take all of my D20s and roll them, and whoever gets the highest starts the night off. Nerd. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've, I don't have any metal dice. I don't have any. You don't. Anything right. other than uh, plastic, so it I can't. rolls so can't well. I would love, uh, I, I love, I like follow all the uh, uh, Twitter accounts that make the gemstone dice, because they're so pretty. Jeff but. is new to the world of like very expensive of fancy dice. dice. And so Jeff was texting us like one day, he's like, oh my God, how much are these? And then he starts to find out and he's like, what? And I'm like, oh dude, that's the low end. <laughs> yeah, my oh, husband yeah. had much the same reaction. Yeah, $400 uh, after I came back for from dice. my last dice shopping spree. I was like, don't no. worry about it. I've, I've spent a little, <laughs> I have not gone crazy. Yeah, but that, that's about where I live. My obsidian dice are not cheap. Uh, I know how they, much those are because I've eyed them. But they're also <laughs> but they're also on the low end of, of like, expensive dice. Like you start getting into yak bone <laughs> yeah. or like uh, yeah or wood. Uh, oof. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Crazy <laughs> stuff, but hey, you gotta like how it rolls. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you so much for everything in chat. Uh, picking the best comment is going to be really tough. Mm. I'm really happy it's not up to me. So our Dungeon Run Wardens behind the camera are going to be deciding who to crown the best of the week. And while they're doing that, please take a few moments to get your last Dungeon Run fix. Watch here now. If I agree to your terms and take care of this situation for you, will you hold up your end of the bargain? Siv, one moment. Allow me to negotiate. I don't think any of you know what it's like to be a criminal. I do. I don't. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Would we have a deal? What's the deal exactly? I'll take care of Mr. Whitebeard. No one needs to know. We are not assassins, Siv. No offense, Argo, but one man's life, especially this Whitebeard, is nothing in the greater scheme of things. I don't expect any of you to get your hands dirty. I have in the past, and I will again. Anyone else have a problem with what he is suggesting right now? Yes! Of course. I murder monsters, not people. I think perhaps we should let Siv chat with him. I'll go and then talk as a party private. I am later. very surprised at you, Lily. No. This is wrong. I'm what he is suggesting is wrong. I am not saying I agree with it. You're allowing him to talk to him as if it is. We can still hear you. I understand that. I am the only one in here being honest. Not Amongst me. thieves. The three of the pirates pull their scimitars. I'll go. I'll what? Stop. Can't you see that you're elevating the situation? Yes. You're making it worse. Stop. It's already bad. Yes, Ed, but it could be worse. Look at them. At Stop. least that's a choice we can make. All right, all right. You come aboard me, ship. You think you play by the rules, even though your friend, who said he was speaking for you, said you'd follow me rules on me, ship. That did not suggest murder. All right. 
Could I please? No. Steve told me you were a cheat. He didn't say you were a liar. Oh, it gets so <sighs> heated. Um, all right, folks, to everybody at home, thank you so much. You went hard sharing your amazing questions and comments this evening. And while everyone gave us something good to use, the best of the night goes to, drum roll please, Shady Sheba, who said, can y'all make a Candle Queen t-shirt? Now, this is in reference to our producer, Amanda, who <laughs> lights the candles yes. and uh, makes us happy how many people constantly recognize the crew on this show. Yes. So we really appreciate it. Thank you guys so very much. Shady Sheba, we will reach out to you and get you your cool new Dungeon Run shirt in the mail. Oh, and while we're giving you the viewers props, we have to shout out an amazing piece of fan art submitted by Ben Wesenick. Look at this. Yeah, welcome you, welcome you to the tardy plunder. <laughs> I'm Mervis Blowhard, the captain of this vessel. <laughs> I'm notorious. Yes, <laughs> especially in these seas. Is this ship fairly adept at moving through reefs? <laughs> the tardy plunder, of course. You know, this is the ship that made it through the castle on the Isle of Rum, and I only took 11 sips from me pint. <laughs> I guess you could say, I did the entire castle rum in less than 12 pint sticks. Oh. Oh, oh, Ben, thank you again so much. Some fancy Dungeon Run Incredible. swag is on its way to you as well. Incredible. So to everyone watching, uh, make sure that you upload your fan art to the thedungeonrunfandom.com, uh, and that could earn you some swag moving forward in the future as well. So another awesome dungeon rundown in the books. A ginormous thanks to Morgan, Peter Brown, and Jessica Lynn Parsons. Woo Yay. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, there's no way that we can end the night without saying thanks to you, the watchers of the time stream. Make sure that you come back to Caffeine tomorrow, Wednesday at 6 p.m. for an all new episode of The Dungeon Run. And then next Tuesday for another fantastic recap of all the action right here on The Dungeon Rundown. I'm your host, Trisha Hirschberger. Good night. <laughs>